and welcome back to the channel on this video we're going to do a review on the aerial rider grizzly as you see it right there now this is my second review on this bike i did one after four months and this will be a 10 month 10 month review i have a little more of a handle on the bike now as you can see it there i walk around it It's pretty much uh, the same as when I got it stock. The only thing that has changed from the last uh, review that I did, because I didn't change anything at all on the uh, last one, is I put a mirror, a bar end mirror right there uh, on it and uh, the tires are different. And uh, so these are uh, E Huntsman V Moto tires. And uh, they sure changed the look of the bike. I'll say that. They make the bike a little bit heavier. The bike uh, with the stock tires was 105 pounds. And now with these tires, it's bumped it up to about 110 pounds. So you get a little more weight there. You lose a little bit in your uh, top end speed, but maybe a couple of miles per hour. So you're still going to, uh, maybe one or two, you're still going to hit. Uh, 35 miles an hour top speed on a flat uh, with the Grizzly. Um, so I'll go with some of the pros that I have. And uh, the first pro that comes up would be the motors. I mean, having two motors makes all the difference in the world. If you're going to be climbing... Uh, if you're going to be climbing any kind of hills, and we've got lots of hills in this area here where I'm at, uh, then you'll want uh, either a lot of power in your motor, single motor, or you'll want dual motor as I have right here. They're 1,000 watt each, uh, peaking at uh, 1,850 watts uh, each motor, giving you a total of 3,700 watts combined. And... Um, I don't always uh, ride with two motors running. I usually just use the rear motor. Um, and when I do want to use both motors, that's for more uh, getting through an intersection uh, rapidly if I want quick acceleration or for hill climbing. Or if I just want to get out of a situation quickly, I will uh, throw on the uh, both motors. But generally, I just ride with the rear motor. Uh, one reason why I mostly choose to ride with the rear motor is it's a lot quieter and so uh, it's better for when I'm doing videos it uh, my voice doesn't get you know uh, mixed in with the sound of the motor so it, it works out well but um, like I say when I have to use the two motors they're there to use uh, let me turn on the dash so the two motors are the standout for this bike so we're they're 52 volt I should say it's a 52 volt two batteries one right here which is the 20 amp hour and then you got your 15 amp hour battery right there that's just, it's a standard with this bike you'll get two uh, batteries uh, automatically I should mention this is the v2 they now have a v3 not too much change I don't think between the the models um, mine came with two 5 amp chargers they now only come with one so you can't charge both batteries up at the same time without having to purchase another uh, charger so that's kind of a negative but uh you know if you don't mind that it it takes probably to do a full charge the the bigger battery probably takes seven hours and the smaller one five to six i would say so the 20 amp is is the big one 15 being the smaller Uh, one of the other um, pros to this bike for sure is the uh, full suspension. I mean, you can see right there that uh, you really notice the difference when you go on a bike that doesn't have a rear suspension. Uh, like I have my uh, Rad Rover and it only has single uh, front suspension. So uh, when I get on that one, you can feel the bumps. It's different. Uh, and just, just in general, it's a fast bike. If you like something that 
wants uh, that um, with some get up and go this is the bike for you and if you've got hills like I say to climb this would be your bike I don't think I would recommend this bike to be a first bike like if this is your first ever uh, e-bike I would uh, I would get something else first a little bit uh, maybe a little less powerful maybe a single motor and then work your way up uh, you got to be careful riding this because it could throw you off if you uh, are not um, familiar with the bike at all you know it could throw you off and uh, and you don't want that happening um, but uh, if you want power uh, this is uh, powerful get you up the hills no problem I've not had an issue yet some some hills I've climbed over 30 miles an hour and and that's you know like accelerating going up hills so so <laughs> let's see what else can i say that's uh, the plus oh the other thing that's really nice the hand grips are really really nice i like those i like the half twist throttle here um i also like this here this switch here is to turn on and off the motors whether you're you have one operating or two and um i like that because if you're say at an intersection and you're waiting on a light or you're waiting on cars at a stop a stop four-way stop then uh, you don't want to accidentally hit that so with this I always uh, turn that off when I get to a stop uh, stoplight and I'm waiting and then when it just before it turns I turn that back on and away we go over here I should mention this is your your switch for turning on right now that's set to rear motor you can turn the other way for front motor only or in the center gets you both motors this here bell it's okay for uh, riding on trails like pedestrian uh, uh, bike trails pass but not uh, not in your bike lane on the road I mean they should have a horn on here that's loud enough a car is not going to hear that so that's one of my negatives um, I should go back to positive for a moment those two batteries I've never ran out of battery power in my riding but also I gotta say I've not ridden this bike to uh, to its fullest as far as uh, seeing how far we can go on the battery charge I have not done that I've had it where it's gotten down to 20% left or 25 in the in that range and um, I uh, uh, did get home though without getting it down to zero so I don't know I think if I was guessing and with these tires it's going to be a little bit less because they are heavier like I say they put almost five pounds more onto the bike but I got to think you should be able to get even with these tires and the both batteries even if you just throttled the whole time and throttled pretty fast I got to think you could get uh, like say you were throttling around 30 miles an hour I think you could get close to 30 miles um that's if you're really extending it like going 30 miles an hour all the time like i say a top end speed would be 35 and um it, you'd find a hard uh, it, it's hard to, to get it up to 35 because there's not a lot of places that you can ride that fast unless you're on the on the road you know and there's no bike lane and you want to just keep up with cars the best you can but uh, otherwise you're not always going to ride 35 let's get to some uh, negatives as I noticed my front fender is a little bit loose there uh, some of the uh, negatives would be first of all that bell that I told you I would prefer a horn oh let's go back to one more positive this uh, display that display is nice I mean that's about as good as you're gonna get in my opinion for a display and uh, zoom in to get a good look at it um, that that is a, a really nice display I don't have any complaints with that I love the fact that it's colored and um, so that's the display and let's go back to the negatives the bell like I told you is a negative I think the fenders right here are a negative they just see where they stop right there I would like it to come down more down to the halfway almost down the wheel or at least more than it is now uh, the front also but I'm not as worried about the front although I would like it to go down a little bit more there but um, uh, you can see some mud on my bike it needs to be cleaned here 
but uh, yeah it's uh, the fenders are one of the uh, other issues that I have with it I don't have too many cons you know and when I think about it um, I'm trying to think what else uh, one of the things I would like to have on this bike uh, would have been uh, cruise control um, probably I'm nitpicking now but I would like a cruise control um, the other thing I would like to see the bike have had is signal lights um, it does have the uh, front headlight rear tail light and a brake light the headlight is the other one you won't be able to see it really now because it's uh, sunny out here but that headlight it gets it, you can get by with it but if you're going to do a lot of night riding or dark riding in the dark then i would suggest probably getting a more powerful uh, headlight than the one that's on it uh the seat i should mention the seat the seat is nice for me it's fine um i'm five foot nine and so for me the seat is perfectly fine but if you're a, a bigger guy say over six six feet or more I think you'd want to get the extended seat to come out here and um, be more comfortable because this would be a little tight for your uh, legs would be you know not a lot of leg room let's say that and uh, uh, there's pegs here in the back I should mention here for to ride a passenger I have never ridden with anyone obviously I don't have a they'd have to sit on that because I don't have an extended seat uh, the pedals are fine. I have heard people, uh, uh, others uh, complaining that, and this is probably due to height where it's not the greatest for pedaling. I don't have that problem. I, I'm perfectly fine pedaling this bike. It's not an issue for me. I generally leave it in number one, pedal assist one, it's fast enough. Um, whereas the Rad Power by a Rad uh, Rover. Uh, I should say it's uh, more of three. I like it at number three, but this bike is perfectly fine at one for a lot of riding. I mean, if you're on a bike lane or bike path, I should say, uh, with pedestrians, you don't want to go real fast. You know, you want to look out for each other. And so uh, one is fine. Um, but there it is, the Aerial Rider Grizzly. The brakes are fine. I forgot to mention about the brakes. Hydraulic uh, disc brakes, they are perfectly fine. I have no issues with those. And I want to mention one more thing before I wrap up this video. Now, a while back, not long after I did the uh, first review on the bike, I had an issue with, I didn't know what it was at first. I thought, oh, the motors, you know, there's something, uh, the motor, the back motor, something's going on. And then... Um, I could feel like uh, vibrations, you know, when I'm sitting on the seat uh, and, and, and things like that, less power, you know, than, than normal. And so uh, I eventually, um, after a little bit of that, if, you know, I don't know how long I might have went a week or maybe a little less than a week. And I contacted uh, Aerial Rider and they told me to stop riding uh, with that motor and uh, they said it would be a controller issue, it sounded like. And so they wanted pictures uh, of down here where the motor cables connect there to show them the, the pins there of, uh, of that. And then uh, in the meantime, I was only riding the front motor. And there's one more thing I want to get to that's a negative about the bike. But anyway, the motor, uh, the front motor, then the front motor started doing that. So it, it ended up being I had both controllers replaced. They figured uh, the, after seeing the pictures um, that it was the controllers that were the problem. So I sent them, or they sent me new, the new controllers. I sent them the old ones back. And um, I've heard of a few others having issues like that with the uh, version two, but I'll, not a lot. Just a few people have said they've had that problem. And with version three, I have not heard anybody uh, complain about the controllers. So. Uh, if there was any problem, it was only with a few bikes, it sounds like, and I uh, was one of the unlucky ones that got that. But uh, with these new controllers, I have not had an issue. Um, so, uh, yeah, that. The other thing I wanted to tell you here before I go off is uh, it came to mind as I'm doing this because I'm not reading off any script or anything. I'm just coming off the top of my head here. 
is the front motor um, that uh, if you just start out with that either both motors going or just the front motor it's going to spin out on you when you uh, go from a standstill and that's not uh, safe and it's not a great idea because you'll wear your tire pretty quickly doing that so uh, I generally if you're at a stop or at the start of a hill and you want to uh, go up the hill with both motors I suggest you use the one motor first the rear to get going get going about seven or eight miles an hour then pop on your other uh, front motor and then you won't have the spin out problem because if you're not used to that it could it could also uh, throw you from the bike and you don't want to have any accidents so that is the aerial rider grizzly as we pan around and look at it one more time here so that's going to do it for this video on the channel I hope you enjoyed this review of uh, 10 months of riding the Aerial Rider Grizzly. It's been a very good bike. I should mention the price. So the price is $3,299. So it's not a cheap bike. But if you want a powerful bike and have the money, uh, it's worth the money. I can say that's built like a tank. Um, I call it a tank because it certainly is uh, just that. So I'll leave a link in the descriptions below if you want to uh, the link to go to look at this bike at their website so thank you for joining me on this video as we review the aerial rider grizzly and until next time take care